Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the coronavirus pandemic. I'm Dr. Rishi Desai. I'm the Chief Medical Officer here at Osmosis. I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Doctor, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases doing viral outbreak research. Today we're going to talk about BCG vaccine, and specifically what BCG vaccine is, is a vaccine given to prevent dissemination of tuberculosis. So it's given often to infants to prevent it causing uh, TB meningitis, which is uh, in many cases fatal for young babies. So there's this paper, and essentially in this paper what they did is they looked at two variables. One is, does a country use BCG vaccine? And the other variable is, how much mortality are they seeing from COVID-19? And they did correct for certain factors like income. And here's the kicker, COVID-19 and attributable mortality in BCG using countries was 5.8 times lower than in countries that didn't use BCG. So this, of course, created lots of uh, news uh, cycles and a lot of people got excited about this finding. One thing that uh, I, I think is worth pointing out is going right to the discussion section. And in their paragraph about limitations of the study, they really point out themselves that health system preparedness and isolation measures were not really uh, accounted for. And that's not something that they kind of easily uh, modeled in this study. And of course, we know that the virus goes from person to person, and these kinds of measures play a huge role in how much mortality you're gonna see. Having said that, it's worth asking the question, does BCG vaccine help? And if so, what's the data behind it? So there's this wonderful study that I came across, it's from 2011, and it's a randomized trial of BCG vaccine at birth, and what they wanted to look at was mortality in infants. So let's look and see how they did this study. They basically took two groups of infants and they have around 1,100 in each group, so the BCG group and the control group. And in many ways, these two groups are quite similar. And this is table one from their study. So the BCG group got BCG and the control group did not. So they followed them over time to see what the, the rates of death were. And of course, this is a very sad graph to look at because we're talking about infants, real infants that are dying. Uh, and this tracks over time for, for the duration of the study was about a year. And this higher line, the one where there's more mortality, is the group that did not get BCG. And this lower one is the group that did get BCG. So what were the infants dying of? And this is a bit of a shocker for me reading this paper, is that most of these kids were dying of causes that were not tuberculosis. So they're dying of neonatal sepsis. In many cases, presumably that is bacterial sepsis respiratory infections, breathing problem, and in most of those cases, viral infections. And so if they're dying of other causes, why is BCG vaccine preventing those causes? And in fact, there's a whole section on TB specifically. Let me just highlight that for you. Talk specifically here about low birth weight infants that were exposed, and they very clearly say none of the exposed low birth weight children died of TB. And so again, TB is not causing this mortality. This mortality difference you're seeing here is due to other causes. So the main finding here is that they saw 17% fewer deaths among infants, but this wasn't statistically significant. They, they flagged that because their study wasn't powered to detect this difference. And so it leaves you wondering whether this, this is just maybe spurious or random, or if this is real. So a couple years after that paper was published, the WHO weighed in on this. So based on this data and other data, the WHO surmised the following, it said regarding the possible non-specific effect of BCG on all, course, on all cause mortality, again, not related to TB, but other cause of mortality, the epidemiological review suggested possible beneficial effects on all cause mortality. They reviewed the data and there are some possible benefits of BCG on things other than TB. So it begs the question, how is BCG vaccine helping things other than tuberculosis? I mean, that's what the vaccine is made for, right? So what's it doing? And there's this great paper that kind of spells out uh, the mechanism of how this might be working. And in fact, they have a graphical abstract, which was also the first time I've come across one of these. And this graphical abstract does a really beautiful job of spelling it out. It says, look, you, you vaccine with BCG, that causes the monocytes, remember the monocytes are the immune cells that are in the tissues, kind of just waiting to, to be uh, the first line of defense, causes those monocytes to make more IL-1 beta. This is the cytokine. They make more IL-1 beta, and that essentially helps you to defeat other viruses, in this case, like yellow fever. So actually what they did here was quite interesting. 
This is essentially the, the protocol. They gave BCG vaccine, they gave it 28 days before they introduced the yellow fever vaccine. Then they gave the vaccine, so this is a weakened virus, and they checked to see what the viremia of this vaccine would look like in healthy volunteers. They checked a few days later up to about a week later. And this is what they found. Let me just zoom right in for you. So essentially, the IL-1 beta levels, when they're checking your immune cells after they've kind of been stimulated by BCG, are, your immune cells are able to produce way more IL-1 beta. You can see that with the LPS in the second panel with MTB, C. albicans. These are different challenges they're giving your immune cells, and each time your immune cells are making much more IL-1 beta. So this priming effect of BCG is really paying dividends as these uh, cells are able to make more of the cytokine that you need. How does that translate to the virus? Well, you give the virus, the yellow fever vi virus, uh, to a, a healthy volunteer, and you look at viremia, how much virus is floating around in their blood. And this panel right here, this panel B, shows that basically the folks that got BCG that are making all that IL-1 beta now have lower levels of viremia. Their, their levels are, and this is a log scale here, so significantly lower amounts of viruses detected in the blood. A related question is, does this affect your ability to make an effective immune response? If you're blunting the amount of virus, are you still able to get a good antibody response? And you can see that here in panel D, the antibody titers at day 90, so three months out, is basically the same between both groups, the BCG group and the placebo group. So even though it causes more IL-1 beta and less virus, you're getting the same really wonderful antibody response three months out. So here's the kicker. They're basically saying the fact that we know that BCG can train your immune system, specifically the innate immune cells, those monocytes, train them to make more of that IL-1 beta. And we know that IL-1 beta is effective against various viruses, uh, including the one they tested here, like yellow, uh, yellow fever virus, that they surmise that actually it might be effective in other viral infections, and so they have a couple of citations for other papers. But this is the logic, the idea that BCG vaccine is really training up your innate immune system, and that is going to help prevent disease from other infections, and that's really what's in question here. If that's true, and, and we're going to know this because there are randomized controlled trials happening to study this right now on COVID-19, if this is true, and it's effective for, let's say, a year, like we saw in that infant study, then potentially this could be a way to bridge people that are high risk to the point where they're effectively getting the vaccine they need for the uh, SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID-19 disease. So this is a bridging mechanism and we'll see if this ends up panning out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to get daily updates. Check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for all of our resources. Again, remember, we're all in this together, so help us by flattening the curve and raising the line. Be well.